Hello, Justin. Hi there. Thank you very much for You're volunteering. Very welcome. And My pleasure. we're going to do a, a sort of a mock up of a, a traditional Alexander lesson, which is going to involve a sitting, standing, and moving in a very, yeah. very simple sequences of getting up and down uh, in a chair. Perfect. Now, normally I would go into a certain amount of detail. If I'd met you for the first time, I'd want to make sure that uh, there's nothing untoward going on with you, that you, you know that you're healthy and uh, adequate to accompany yourself in ups and downs mm -hmm. and movements or walking, and that there's nothing I, I need to be cautious about. So we'll assume that everything is, everything is okay, okay on that yes. score. But I would like to ask in particular, mm. do you have any sensations, aches or pains that you would like ideally in an ideal world Lots. to be improved yes. Yes, and I do. what would they be? Um, the biggest area of discomfort for me is around my neck and shoulders mm -hmm. uh, and I've struggled with it for some time. Uh, I have had lots of osteopathy uh, over the years. Um, my work uh, is, I'm a chef, so a lot of my work is very front facing and mm. it's also a lot of repetitive movement and I'm on my feet a lot. So I do, I do the longer I'm doing those repetitive actions, the, the more extreme the pain that I feel is. Yeah. But I was fascinated to hear what you were talking about earlier because I think a lot of, um, I teach people, so I'm talking, mm. I'm performing, and I recognize a lot of mm. the postures that you mentioned at the beginning of the conversation about that front facing, I've yes. got, I know my eyes get quite big when I talk. I can feel a very sort of engaged yeah. manner, and that, so yeah. I'm sure there's something in there. That I think what you're talking about is universal, so it's not mm. just you, but you may have it in a magnified way because of the, the sort of work that you, yeah. you are required to yeah. do, which, as you say, is front-facing. It's demanding. You're mm. engaging with people, yeah. and so the, the chin leads and the eyes lead, yeah. and therefore there's a straining that will ne necessarily and naturally be going on in the neck and Absolutely. the shoulders and the back. Yeah. And uh, as we were saying before, and we'll do some demonstrations soon, my, my role isn't to somehow massage it or make it better, mm. but to develop in you as an education, as a learning experience, how you can engage with the people you're interested in, but in a way, and I'll use this term rather loosely, stay back mm -hmm. emotionally and physically. So that yeah. even though I'm interested in you, I'm not going into yeah. your space. I totally get that, and there's, yeah. that's, that's fascinating for me as an area to explore. And it, and it's, it's an exploration mm. and it's a learning experience. Mm. And the learning experience is, I want to use the word self-regulation, because really what mm. you can learn in, in the Alexander process is a capacity to both be involved and very yeah. engaged, and you are a very engaging person. You, you engage and you have skill. You'll be chopping and showing yeah. and presenting, multitasking, and you don't want to lose their interest and their attention. So you'll be involved, very, very clear and concentrating on making sure that you don't chop your fingers off and at the same time wanting to engage the interest in. Exactly. And that's a huge amount of demand. Absolutely. And that stressor, for most people, pulls them out of their skin. It, ma it magnetizes them towards other people or towards the object of what you're involved in. So in a nutshell, the Alexander Technique is a, is, is a way to, to develop the capacity of what Alexander called inhibition which is the capacity re to receive all of these stimuli and demands, mm. both from inside of yourself, the internal demands, and from outside, people asking you questions, and to remain okay within your mind and body. And that's not about being inauthentic. It's still about not having those responses. Oh, yes, but, yes. Yeah. There's nothing inauthentic about not no. getting stressed out and not activating a flight-fight response. Yeah. There's nothing inauthentic no. about being a bit more chilled. Mm. No, I get all of that, absolutely. It may feel weird for you for a mm. while, when you're more used to that sort of engagement, mm. of face-forward engagement. Of course, it'll feel weird, but it, it's, it's, it's spontaneous, mm. it's natural, it's authentic, and it's still very much you. But it's you without activating the sympathetic nervous system. Yeah. Yeah. So the job of my hands is to teach you, to guide you and teach you that there is a way of being in the world without the repetition, mm. because Alexander's very much about habits that disturb, habits that distort, habits that over a period of time cause trouble, like with Alexander, the voice problems. It could be you, it's the same mm -hmm. thing. You're getting the symptom here. Alexander got the symptom here. Someone else might get the symptom in their digestive system. Someone else, it might be eye strain. Another person, it might be lower back. That's why I was saying before that the symptom for me is not particularly important. What is important is the attitude. Yeah. It's a psychological and physical attitude 
that keeps on being repeated and amplified in the acts of daily living. And it's at that moment that I want the Alexander Technique to be applied, at the moment of the tendency of mm. pulling out of ourselves, mm. pulling out of our skins into the world, mm. into the future. Okay? Yep. Good. Right. So what we'll do is, um, we'll, we'll start you standing. And so I think perhaps if I have you perhaps like, like this, and you'll put your feet a little bit wider apart for now. And what's going to happen is the chair's behind you, and I won't take it away. And I'm going to put my hands on in various places, maybe the head, the back, the shoulders. And it's important for you to know one or two things about what, what, what the game is. The game is, I'm going to move you, and you can do nothing wrong. That's number one. You can't fail. I Good. can, but you can't. Good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move you variously. I might move your head left and right. I might move an arm. I might, move, I might ask you to bend your knees and get into the chair. So right now I'm just moving your head here, and I'm moving your head here. And you're allowing me, to the best of your ability, you're just letting me do the movements. You're not taking them over. Sometimes when I'm working, it, there might be a bit of silence. And um, in the silence, I'm still working away. And what I'm doing is I'm placing my hands in different places in order to communicate something. And what I'm communicating is a certain quality within you of letting. Uh, the moment you're physically letting me move you which corresponds to an emotional or mental letting of you allowing me to be in control, so to speak. Yes? Mm. If anything feels weird or uncomfortable or whatever, you just let me know. So now I've got my hands here. I'm going to ask you to bend your knees as your hips come back and slowly get yourself into, this, into the chair. When you get to the chair, stop there, and I'm going to move you back. That's it. What are you feeling for while you're doing this, Anthony? Yeah, we touched on it, touched on it very briefly before. Uh, it's not so much I'm feeling for, but communicating to. So it, I will pick up on things, but in a way that's incidental. What is important is that while I'm working, I'm communicating a quality of mind-body or self, a certain quality of ease to Justin, so that when I'm moving her, She's letting me move her, and she's coming off certain control patterns or familiar patterns that she'd normally be adopting as her way of being in the world. Wait to just soften yourself a little bit here. That'll do. That's fine. Does that feel a bit bizarre? Mm -mm. You're okay with that? And again, I'm going to move the head. The other thing about listening, my own experience of someone putting hands on and listening is it would make me rather paranoid. So if I have my hands here and I'm saying, hmm, well, that's interesting, you'll be thinking, what? What's, he, what? what's he feeling? And my prime purpose, and I can't emphasize this enough, the prime purpose of an Alexander practitioner is to give the pupil the experience of not being paranoid, of not being examined, of not being assessed, and not being judged, but being totally accepted the way they are. Totally accepted, not judged, but embraced exactly the way they are. And this psychological aspect of the technique is often misunderstood, but it's the primary attitude of an Alexander teacher, and that's why we take three years and more, more to actually develop these capacities. That the, the touch has to come from a place of, I'm not here to judge. I'm here to say, your shape is fine, your neck is fine, and I'm going to help you prevent a reaction. So I'm going to now move you forward, Justine. You're going to come with my hands, that's fine. 
I'm going to move you backwards. I'm going to move you forwards. That's fine too. At a certain point, you're pretty much over your feet there. I'm going to ask you in a second to stand, and I'm going to look after you. At the same time as I ask you to stand, stand up with your feet right now. That's it, all the way up, and then bend the knees. And then stand up with the heels. Good. And then bend the knees. Mm -hmm. And then again, stand up with the heels. And bend the knees. Mm -hmm. And then I'll probably, maybe for the purpose of the camera, I don't really know. But for now, if I said to you, what, what part of your body was working just now? What, um, did, you, what did you feel was actually? My legs. My... Correct. Your legs. And what was working less? My upper body. Correct. So from, from here upwards, you probably didn't feel it was doing too much. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's right. But what was working, obviously, since you're not going to levitate, your legs were getting you in and out of a chair. Yeah. And the rest of you, your face, your mouth, your jaw, your shoulders, your neck and your back, were pretty much not... Still. Still. And this word still, I think, is very, very important, and it conveys the heart of the Alexander Technique, which is a psychophysical stillness. It's a quality of ease and true relaxation, not the relaxation of collapse, but the stillness of an undisturbed mind and body. And this template that we're working with right now can be applied to every single activity of everyday life. So I'm going to again. Can you see it's not being disturbed, is it? That you're still staying with yourself. Mm -hmm. Do you understand a bit what I meant by staying back? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That you're staying, there's something you're here. You're not being pulled out into the, mm. into the distance, into the end, into the goal, into the people who are asking you questions or you're trying to explain something about chefing. You're also here, sitting with your bum on the seat, able to listen and experience. Same thing, I'm going to move you forwards. That's fine. And at the same time, all I want from you is to stand up with the heels. That's it. What's it like to get out of a chair like that? It's much nicer. It is, but mm. why? Can you explain? Um, it feels much more mechanical rather than um, emotional, I suppose. That's not quite right. But it, this, this is quite strong and solid. Yes. And it knows what to do, and it's a mechanical action, whereas this is much more... Well, it's just this is also yes. my pain area, so it's very yes. nice for it to not be involved. So, not, so it's coming off a button, isn't it? It's coming yeah. off a pattern, and, and, you're, and it's less dramatic. Yeah. I think that's what, perhaps what yeah. you mean by less emotional. Yes, that is what I mean. Would that activity normally have been painful or, or slightly painful for you, getting out of uh, a chair? No, getting out of a chair, as it happens, isn't difficult, but uh, what I'm aware of all the time is that this is very noisy. Mm. Yes, this so, is always yeah. engaged. And right so actually now, having a touch yeah. is lovely and also turning a bit, the bit of me that's the noisiest off is yeah. lovely. So you just, just, just described the Alexander Technique in, in, in very, very beautiful terminology. The switching off of the noise. Mm. And we're all involved in so much noise, psychological and physical noise, that's manifested by the pushing forwards of the mm. chin and the disturbances of the neck and the throat and the back and the overactivity of the eyes, and all the rest of it that is a signal of an overreactive nervous system. And there is a way of being, like now, in the world, where you're happier in your own skin, mm. where you're okay, where you can be soft and kind to yourself, where you can be with your heart and your gut mm -hmm. and yourself in all its manifestations, and participate in the world as well without the dramas that we normally involve mm. as we go around in a, a daily activity. And it's also as if the muscles have their own little dramas as well That's as right. all of this stuff. Exactly. Which is the, in fact, yeah. simultaneously. Yeah. And what you're learning is coming back to a state of homeostasis where those little muscles that do repeat those habits of distortion are quietened. Mm. The noise drops. Which is why I like it so much. Yeah. 
Mm. The noise drops and you drop mm. into yourself and you have an experience of being yourself in a different way to the usual dramas. Mm. And over time, this quality grows, this quality of stillness and the absence of noise grows. The neck muscles, the facial muscles, the jaw muscles come off their habitual patterns. And you're able to sustain and maintain this quality of ease in more and more demanding activities. One of our audience has commented that yes. they're, they're still unsure of what the focus of the movements is while you're doing this. And I think they mean both Justine's movements and your movements, because you were moving the, yes. the, the seat behind the neck from side yes. to side. And yes, and in a way they're arbitrary. Sometimes there's a little bit of method to my madness, but at the moment they're pretty arbitrary. I'm at the moment just moving Justine so that she can have an experience of something happening to her where she's not in control. So she's exercising a capacity of acceptance and stillness, even though something's happening and she's not fighting for, I'm in control, I'm gonna move my own head. She's experiencing the absence of being a control freak, which is very liberating, very, very liberating. And with your hands, when she's standing, using heels or f uh, front of her feet, whichever. Her knees again, <clears throat> all the way. What are you communicating with your hands when she's doing that? Are you steadying so her or? I'm communicating the absence or the neutralizing or the prevention of an excitation. Mm -hmm. Okay? The absence mm -hmm. or the neutralizing of the excitation of straining forwards with the face, forward facing is what Justin called it. This, this, this ever present straining that we all get involved in and pretty much in everyday life of of efforting and pushing and pulling. And right now, Justin's experiencing, stand up with your heels. What was it like to get out of a chair like that? Nice. It's unmistakable, isn't mm. it? And it's the absence of something. I'm not teaching her anything. I'm not teaching her to have the right shape in her neck. I'm not correcting her neck. I'm not correcting her shoulders. I haven't even moved her shoulders. This is much more internal than people understand about Alexandra. It's not a shape change. It isn't an adjustment of her postural patterns. It's much more internal. And how do you, we've got 10 to 15 minutes here with you demonstrating this technique. Mm -hmm. How do you expect your patients to then continue this technique after you'd finished dealing with them? Your, your pupils, I beg your pardon. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd like them to come for a number of sessions, not as a one-off. The one-off, hopefully, would be, it would be enough for Justin to say, hmm, there's something in this. Yeah. This isn't just some hippie with yeah. Birkenstock sandals who hugs trees. What, what's the normal course of treatment? How many, how many t sessions would you recommend? Or how many would lessons? You expect? Yes. Lessons. Yeah. Yeah. I would suggest that um, ideally she would come twice a week for 10 weeks, 15 weeks, maybe three times a it's week. It's a big commitment. It is a big commitment, yes. It's interesting, the idea of commitment. People, when they're in trouble and they're saying, Anthony, if I don't sort this out, I go, I'm going to have to go under the knife and have an operation, they would offer anything. I would love people to come to Alexander before those extreme moments where they are in absolute, an absolute pickle, they can't play the guitar anymore and they've got to give a concert. Those moments are really, really upsetting. So to get to the point where you can have preventative Alexander lessons and learn to stop yourself getting into a mess, for me would be the most exciting yeah. possibilities. But yes, some people come and they are in extremists. And I would say, look, However many sessions you need to come, come four or five times a week for the next five or six weeks. Let's see if we can avoid the knife. Great, fantastic, whatever. Are you prepared to commit to a strike rate of success on that um, basis? You mean uh, money back if I don't succeed? No, no. I, how many times do you think you've saved someone from a surgeon's knife? What I can't percentage? even... Uh, a number of times people have said, I never thought this was possible. I'm out of chronic pain, and if it wasn't for that, I'd have gone under the knife. So, yes, people have said that, and that's anecdotal. Yes, yes. yes. So I think the intensity of Alexander does tend to work better. If, if Justin was coming once a week for 30 weeks, you'll be much further advanced in developing this capacity for psychophysical stillness and inhibition than if she came... If she came three times a week for 10 weeks, she'd be much further ahead. The intensity does seem to amplify and speed up the process. That's it, and then bend the knees again. That's it. So she, the experience right now for Justin is she's actually experiencing sitting, standing, moving, talking, thinking, 
in a way that is a bit, yeah, you can move anything you like because it's not a shape. Often people think they have to keep the shape. Of mm -hmm. course you don't. So there you are. You're in, you're, you're, you've had an experience of a few minutes of Alexander work. We could carry on if you want to in a few minutes. But do you want to report anything? Any, any questions that are coming uh, in? Well, I love the sensory. I find that that for muscular tension is um, instantaneous. So I feel everything just dropping. Right. I feel very loose. It's very meditative hmm. and very calming. Uh, I felt quite, um, when I was getting up, standing in my heels, it felt quite sort of like a primate almost. It's quite, it's felt quite very basic. Primate. It is very basic because um, most of us in, in, in modern Western hyper societies are on our toes waiting for the next emergency mm. in hypervigilance, in a state of toxic anxiety. Mm. But About all our actions are this way. We do yeah. very, very little. Well, nothing. That's exactly we don't do right. anything going backwards. We don't at all. So Everything is pulling us out of our skin. So that was very nice to have that mm. totally switched off. Yeah. And it is this switch off that mm. I think is absolutely fundamental to, mm. the, to the technique. The, the switching off of the habitual pattern of hypervigilance, of hyperanxiety, mm. hyper stress reactions, hyper -excit excitability of the nervous system, of the sympathetic mm. nervous system and a return a, and, a, and a recovery of the natural <coughs> self-healing mechanisms which are operating right mm. now. I, mm. I uh, have done lots of work on stress in previous years, but what I find, so I'm sort of, and lots of respiratory work, yeah. but sometimes what I find is, is it's not stressful what I'm doing, but it's just very engaged. Yes. And that's the, the, the work that I yeah. haven't yet managed to do, yeah. which is be engaged and be in, present. Yes. Yeah. But without that, I can even feel it exactly. now. Exactly. So when you said even the words engage, yeah, that is a forward. form of stress. You come forwards. I even I would will call that stress, that level oh, okay. of hyper involvement and engagement. But I want to be like that. Yes. Well, you want to well, you want to be animated, but there's a way of being animated mm. without hurting yourself in the process, mm. without tightening the face and the jaw and, and the muscles around mm. the eyes and the straining of the neck. There is a way of being fully animated. You're extremely animated right now talking to me but you're not hurting yourself in the process. You're maintaining that very still, meditative quality that you're talking about. You yeah. haven't lost it. You're still in it. Yeah. So now, now you're in a self-healing mode of right. operation. And over a period of time, you'll learn to self-regulate yourself into this meditative, still mm. quality of being, even though you are demanded upon by your students in the chef school and they're pulling you out of yourself and you're able to stay back and be fully engaged, mm. fully animated, fully spontaneous, but not reactive. Mm. What's the same with breathing? You can drop, get, get your Absolutely. diaphragmatic breathing exactly. lower down and get it out, out of here. Well, that's what's already happened to you. In fact, yeah. your breathing has already just dropped, dropped into, your, in, 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 into yeah. diaphragmatic breathing. Mm. All of these things are natural consequences. The functional shifts are a natural consequence of coming off See, a lot of people put the cart before the horse. Mm. It's not trying to get the diaphragmatic breathing going. It's not releasing this muscle here. It's coming off the buttons of hypervigilance. And then it naturally... And, it, and things follows. drop into where they need to. The shape will shape itself in the way it's mm. designed to. Your shoulders are in perfect shape. They will go where they need to go. The muscles of the, around the heart and chest will expand when they need to. The feet will naturally devolve into the ground when they need to. It all happens instinctively. Mm. And in fact, a lot of people think Alexander's about working out postural mechanisms from the cortex. It's exactly, exactly the opposite. opposite. I want to get people Turn out of off. I want to get people out of the brains, yeah. out of the cortex, mm. out of this over cerebral way of thinking, into the organic self, mm. into the biological self, into the heart self, and into the gut self. Mm. Places that we don't like too mm. much because that, in that place, and we haven't got time to talk about it today, that's where emo emotional healing also resides. It doesn't reside up here. No. But a drop, you've done body work, I understand. Mm. The drop into the heart and into the gut, into the heart of the heart and the heart of the gut, where emotional experience can be digested. That's really where the, the juice of the Alexander yeah. work has a potential. And it isn't here in the neocortex. We shouldn't be working out how to breathe, how to stand, how to walk, and how to gesture. Quite the opposite. That's what you mentioned about ambition, isn't it, when exactly. you do exercise with yes. ambition? Ambition, yeah. yes. There's two observations which you might like to hear from our audience, actually, Anthony. Yes. Um, the one is, the interesting thing about Justine 
is that she looked to this viewer as though there was a lot of stress, and now she looks much more relaxed, especially in the eyes, which I'm sure, Justine, you're very okay, pleased to hear as well. And the other one is, um, just as an observation, Justine has changed totally from chin outs to a much softer and longer neck posture, which the viewer says is really wow. nice to see. One person did ask, and I, th I think you did answer this, but you yes. might like to answer it again. Um, do you only put your hands on the areas which are painful? Oh, I put my hands anywhere that's appropriate. And I'm not looking to put hands on any place that's painful or not painful because I'm not aware. So I, I put my hands here, or I put my hand here, or I take an arm like this, or I put my hand here. No, I put my hand anywhere on the body that can mm. participate in the coming off the buttons I was talking about. So there's no particular right or wrong place, and I certainly wouldn't target a place of pain for my hands at all, not consciously, not at all. And there's a, a technical question here. Is the action of inhibiting the excitation to do with the discharge of negative electric charge <clears throat> and obtaining an electrochemical homeostasis? Certainly it's about biological homeostasis that would inc include neurological, biochemical, postural, and all the other functionings of the human organism. Yes, yes. most definitely. Good. Okay. We, we've got a few more minutes if you'd like to do any more. Do you, do you, obviously, you must do more things other than sitting standing. Do you do walking techniques as well, or is that just an outcome? Well, since, from... It's a very good question. Since Justin hasn't learned to sit and stand, because actually Justin isn't, I'm not interested in Justin learning to sit and stand. She's learned nothing about the mechanisms of sitting and standing. She's actually learned to maintain a quality of meditative stillness and ease and engagement while she's participating in life. And so there's nothing holy about sitting and standing. And so we don't progress on to walking and then progress on to jogging and then progress on to horse riding and then, not at all. This quality of being is immediately applicable to every single aspect of living, every aspect. So no, if Justine was coming to me for the next 30 years and hopefully I'll be teaching in another 30 years, we'd do the same thing. Well, you'll, you'll like this comment from one of our viewers. It says, this should be taught in schools. And I think they mean other than Alexander training <laughs> schools. That was Alexander's passion. In fact, he opened up a school in the, uh, in the 30s and 40s. Um, today, we'd probably call it a special needs school because parents that were at their, their wit's end would send their kids to Alexander's school in Penhill. And um, Alexander's passion was to catch people early before they started to imitate the postural mm. patterns and the distortions and the emotional uh, distortions of their parents or oh, teachers. I teach in primary school, so we should, ah. we should do it together. Absolutely. Now, I'd love to get Alexander into mm. schools in a way that gives pupils a sense of themselves, mm. of being rather than doing, a quality of being with themselves and without the strivings and the efforts and the concentrations of how to write, but to actually experience the joy of movement mm. with stillness. The before joy all movement. the bad habits set Absolutely. in. Absolutely, before they do, it would be wonderful. So anybody that's got any ideas out there about how to introduce Alexander into mm. the school system and get the funding, <laughs> I'd be very happy. <laughs>